Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have a review for you for a game called Super Cane Magic Zero. This one is written for us by Jace and Shannon going full Team Glover and doing this one together, so thank you very much to the pair of you. I'm hoping for a bit of Super Cane Magic myself this weekend when Spurs take on Liverpool in the Champions League final. Harry Kane, come on son, do the business. But anyway, I digress. Here is our review for Super Cane Magic Zero on the Nintendo Switch. Super Cane Magic Zero is a game that looks as silly as it sounds. Looking like something out of a psychedelic trip, this cartoon-styled action RPG was originally released all the way back in 2015 on the PC and has been considered early access ever since. For nearly four years, the development team have been tweaking, adding and improving the game based on user feedback, with the promise that it would not be considered for full release until they were happy with the depth and the balance of the game. That time has come at last, but has it had enough time to properly cook, or is it just half-baked? Well, let's find out. The story in Super Cane Magic Zero starts off with something you'd expect to see in any good fairy tale, a wizard. However, this is short-lived as the aforementioned wizard dies abruptly, eating a cake sending his dog into such a deep sadness that the poor pooch erupts with magic of his own, setting off an apocalyptic meteor shower. Yes, it's very weird, but it doesn't get any less ridiculous from here. After the short animated introduction, you choose your character who wakes up in the middle of a giant hole with no memories. Of course, as it so happens, cratering is illegal and you are immediately arrested. But lucky for you, the president of this world decided to resign in response to the madness, but not before abolishing all laws, including those keeping you locked up. You are promptly released and sent on your way. This is where your journey truly begins as you embark on an epic quest to restore your memories. Along the way, you will be tasked with saving the depressed doggo, restoring order to the world, and killing off all the mutant vegetables. Mutant vegetables, I hear you ask. Yes, the magic meteor storm turned all vegetables into evil, violent creatures hell-bent on ridding the world of humanity. Because we need an antagonist at the end of the day, I suppose. While the story is crazy and nonsensical, I found it to be fun and humorous, and a decent take on the adventure genre. It's not going to win any awards for depth or stellar writing, but that was never the point. The story is meant to simply entertain, and every now and then I appreciate being given something where I can turn off my brain and enjoy it for what it is. The jokes are decent most of the time, and I found myself laughing out loud on numerous occasions. The one complaint I have is that the self-referential humour and breaking off the fourth wall is a little bit overdone. The story will be too silly for some, but I enjoyed it, and it scores 16 out of 20. The best way I can think to quickly describe the gameplay is Diablo meets the Binding of Isaac. The comparison sounds strange, I'm sure, but here's what I mean. The majority of the game consists of exploring the world and its multiple dungeons from a top-down perspective, while fighting off enemy after enemy and obtaining more powerful loot. However, the combat has a twin stick element to it, in that the left stick moves your character around the map, but does not control the direction of your attacks. For that, you must use the right stick. Once you've properly placed your character and your aim, you must then press the R button to attack. Coming from a game like Diablo, the combat feels strange and a little clunky at first, but after some time with the game and playing around with the different types of weapons, it's a system that I found very rewarding to master. Along with your standard attack, a press of the L button will see you using a secondary support ability from your offhand item, which can be anything from defensive buffs to quick dashes. You also have a special ability depending on which character you choose to play as. My character's special was an area of effect knockback that did minor damage but stunned enemies easily, whilst others include the ability to heal yourself and nearby allies. Whatever you choose, either the ZR or the ZL button will prompt this action. And last but not least, you also have the ability to pick up and throw just about anything. Pressing the A button near items or stunned enemies for that matter will have your character lift the objects overhead. At this point, the right thumbstick becomes a crosshair that you must aim and you then press the R button to throw. Throwing is a crucial part of the combat as tossing one enemy into another causes serious damage. Alternatively, after lifting an item, you can hold the A button for a short time to eat it. Depending on what you eat, you may gain health, a buff, or you may just blow yourself up. 
all of these abilities combine into a hectic but very fun combat system. A design choice I appreciate that complements the combat is that all enemies and weapons scale with your level, so even enemies in starting areas never become trivial. New enemies are introduced at a healthy pace and force you to change up your fighting style. For example, I played strictly melee with a high stun weapon during the early game, but when I came across fire enemies that explode upon death, fighting up close and personal was no longer an option. After dying a few times, I finally switched over to a carrot cannon. Yes, you heard that correctly. And had great success. It should be noted as well that you can change your main character at any point during the story, which is also a nice touch. The reason I've gone into so much detail on the combat is that it is clearly the primary draw and where the developers spent the most time tweaking and balancing to get it right. This is further evidenced by the other game mode, which is the arena. In this mode, you and up to three friends can duke it out in a battle royale style matchup. Now I didn't get a chance to play much of this as it's local only, but I could see it being a ton of fun beating up some of your mates. I know it has had great response on the early access PC version. Back to the story mode then, and there are of course other RPG standards to keep you pushing forward. There are a number of side quests, including finding certain items or helping to rebuild the town. These are not overdone or cumbersome, but instead sit alongside the main story and can mostly be completed at the same time. As you progress the story, you will also unlock various skill trees to further customize your character. There are seven total trees to unlock, each split in half. With the exception of the first tree, you must decide which path to take in each, locking off the other side. For example, one side of a tree may focus on increasing throwing damage and range, while the other may focus on speed and dodging. I've talked up the game a fair bit at this point because it really is a lot of fun, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't point out some of the issues. Loading times are probably the biggest hurdle to full enjoyment. The developers chose to section off maps into small segments that load in full, but switching between them requires another load. These can be 30 seconds or longer at times, and when trying to retrace your steps to find a new path or something that you may have missed, crossing multiples of these becomes tiresome very quickly. The next complaint I have is the map itself. Within each area you can uncover the map by exploring and it does do a good job of showing the points of interest. However, there is no way to see the entire world map or how levels interconnect, so it's up to the player and their memory to know which doorways go to which areas. There are a few locations with quick access teleporters, but I found these to be a bit too few and far between for my liking, as I often forgot where I needed to go next, which coupled with the loading times is a major downer. The last issue is that certain battles within the story mode feel like they were balanced around having multiple players. Beating them solo was extremely slow as you had to play extra carefully, running in circles and throwing whatever you could find instead of engaging head to head. This is a minor grievance to be sure as the game was specifically developed with couch co-op in mind but for those like me playing all alone it is still worth mentioning. If the developers are able to patch the loading times down to something reasonable, this would be a great game, but as it stands, they unfortunately detract a lot from the experience, and all in all, gameplay receives 15 out of 20. The visual style here is fantastic and fits about as well as I could imagine, given the ridiculousness of the story. It falls somewhere in the range of cartoons like Adventure Time and Star vs. The Forces of Evil, but still stands on its own at the same time. Created by comic book artist Simone Cio Albrighi, apologies if I've butchered your name, everything from the characters, enemies and worlds down to the edible food items and even the rocks have their own unique look. The colourful world was a joy to explore thanks to the vibrancy and attention to detail. I loved entering a completely new zone because it meant brand new enemies to fight and rarely were these ever reused designs. Along with the designs, the animations are equally well done. No matter how chaotic the fights got, the unique attack animations and enemy models meant I never lost track of where I was or what was going on. The only knock here is that every once in a while the game will freeze up for a second. It never hindered the gameplay, but it was noticeable when it happened. Additionally, I did crash once during my time with the game too. The visuals are easily my favourite aspect of the game and they receive 17 out of 20. 
The audio department is where Super Kane Magic Zero falls a little bit flat in my opinion. The chiptune music isn't bad at all, but I found it repetitive and grating after a short time. The dungeons are a decent size and the same track will play on loop throughout. In fitting with the cartoon style, the audio is upbeat and sickly sweet even in the most dangerous of areas or during boss battles. The sound effects are decent but forgettable and similarly repetitive. For example, the small explosion of the carrot cannon's bullet has the same impact as the large explosion from a bomb. Audio scores 13 out of 20. For £22.49 or $24.99 you are getting a unique game that has been lovingly and painstakingly created and improved over the last four years. While the loading times are a real bother, the story mode and satisfying combat are a ton of fun. The story will last you around 20-25 to 25 hours which I feel on its own is a decent amount of content for that price. Add to that an endlessly replayable arena mode, assuming of course you have friends to play it with, and this is a package I could recommend to anyone interested. Value receives 16 out of 20. To conclude, Super Kane Magic Zero is one not to be missed by fans of action RPGs. If you can ignore the long loading times and the repetitive audio, you'll find a unique combat-driven gameplay experience that is as rewarding as it is fun. Add in a wonderful cartoony aesthetic and ridiculous story and you've got a game that is worth taking a look at on the Switch. Supercane Magic Zero receives a switch up score of 77%. A huge thanks to Jace and Shannon Glover for this review, wonderfully written as always. Thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video, please do remember to like if you like what you've just seen, and consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time if you haven't done so already. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, we really do appreciate it. Take it easy, happy gaming, and of course, Come on you Spurs.